I am here to demonstrate how to migrate an on-prem VMware workload to Microsoft Azure. This demo is migrating from our on-prem engineering lab to the public cloud in Azure. Before we start, we are assuming the audience of this demo should already be familiar with how Serious Data Cloud and Serious Migrate Cloud works. So we're not going to go too much into the details of that. So let's get started. Normally, we will go to a project and we can run our one line installer and to install our CMC, register the host, and then we can come to migration sessions and create migration. So for the longest time, we can have local migration and remote migration. And we also have something called compute migration, which migrate the entire machine, including the OS into a totally new platform. So we not only migrate data, but also migrate the boot device and also the configuration. So in this project, we have enabled compute migration to VMware and uh, Azure migration. For example, migrating to Azure, we will perform different steps. So going through our wizard, we will be able to uh, select where we are migrating to and all those things. But today, we actually have something very exciting that we can share, which is called Migrate Ops. Migrate Ops is our automation first approach to migration, which extend our existing migration data copying, data synchronization, C motion, all these things, extending to data transformation, platform transformation, and post-migration automation, which include, for example, a database upgrade, a database cleanup, and certain things that is required normally to reconfigure after your migration is completed. So we have created our new concept called Migrate Ops, which extend a migration into a whole operation using an automation first approach. You can imagine this is like a typical Ansible playbook, but purpose built for migration. So let's start with the demo. In this demo, we will be migrating from this VMware environment. Right, so we have one Linux host, which is a Ubuntu machine. 0.145. So we have a, a simple Ubuntu machine called ST Ubuntu 20. And we also have a 10 gig drive as well as a, a one gig device. This one gig device, so it's actually mounted in the slash mnt directory, right? So this is the this is a, our one gig device and also as well as the boot drive. So this is going to be our Linux environment. At the same time, we also have this Sami ninety seven machine that is right here. This machine also has a 50 gig boot drive and a one gig data drive, which is mounted as a SQL data 01 E drive. And inside we just have a dummy file, but which could be just your database file, your running database. So we will be migrating both of these to an Azure account. So this is our Azure environment. It's under our engineering subscription with different resource group already created and we will might be migrating this SAMI resource group, which currently does not have anything other than a subnet that's created by default. So we'll be migrating everything into here. So to start, let's deploy CMC. In this introducing migrate ops project, so let's go ahead. Please note that there are certain extra parameters because this is a currently a non-prod environment in our internal preview non-prod series data. So which is operating only within our VPN network. That said, we will come to our Linux host and paste the command. And we will also grab our Windows command and paste into the Windows. And then we'll wait, we'll let it install. So of course, this is a one-line installation command. We can always use our automation tools like your Ansible your, or even the AWS CloudFormation if you have the agent installed or your VMware, different tools that we can use to automate this and deploy this in a large scale because the same exact command can be used on as many hosts as you want for this project. We will wait for the installation. Okay, we already see that the windows already came in, but to prepare before we start, let's create our Azure integration so that we can let CMC do all the automation stuff in Azure for you. So from our integration goodies, we can always add public cloud in our public cloud section. We can always add different integrations. For this case, we will be adding the Azure Managed Disk. 
Okay, in here, you need to enter your tenant ID, subscription ID, and the client secret. This will be uh, very standard uh, automation credentials. We'll click Save. Boom, it's already created. So in here, we have uh, Azure Engineering, which is uh, integration 15 in this project that we have created. So this is ready to go. Okay, so this is installed. And let's come back to this. And we can see that our Windows and our Linux has been installed. So we can detect this is the Ubuntu and this is a Windows 2009. And we will be migrating these into Azure. But instead of creating my green session, we will be using our brand new Migrate Ops feature. So there we go. So Migrate Ops is a purpose-built migration-focused automation-first migration feature that the goal is to allow you to migrate the whole thing in one shot without any user action required. So let's get started. In here, we'll start a new operation. There are two ways to create Migrate Ops. One is to create through a YAML file and one is to go through an operation wizard, which they are actually the same thing. The operation wizard is more like a YAML file builder, similar to how you will build a CloudFormation or Azure Resource Manager configuration file. And in order to create a YAML file, you will need to know the syntax. So this is very similar to an Ansible playbook or Ansible modules, right? So we need to know the field and everything. So the documentation is not public yet, but by the time this is GA, it will be publicly available. When it's available, we will just simply be able to click on the API on the bottom left right here and see the details. This will also be in our knowledge base as well. So from this documentation, we will be able to see all the field, all the, the things that we can do with Migrate Ops. In this case, we will be using the Migrate Op Azure Compute recipe, which allows us to migrate machines directly into Azure. So let's do that. But we will be able to set the availability zone, your VM size, right, which we would be migrating to, let's say, a standard D2S v3, right, your security group, and all the things that we talk about that we support. Because this is a software as a service solution, these are constantly being updated and we will continuously add new features to it. For example, we'll add additional integration to applications. We might support a SQL database upgrade in the future so that you, after you migrate into Azure, you have an Azure specific upgrade, right? Security settings and different kind of things that is specifically built for the new environment. But for now, let's stick with the basics and migrate the VM with least amount of configuration possible. So from here, based on the, the YAML file here, we will put in our YAML file. And this is it. So let's take a look. Again, this is purely optional. You can use our operation wizard to kind of generate this dynamically by picking the field and everything. Just like any automation, we can send putting in a YAML file. We will be able to um, do this in a very large scale. For example, you can even have a thousand of these just all created in one shot. So we will be specifying the system that we will be migrating and we will also be uh, migrating to Azure East US into the resource group SAMI, which is our SAMI resource group. And we will be using our wide open security group for this demo so that we show that we can actually easily connect to it right after. All right, we'll be just using standard SSD. Obviously we have all the different options, right? With the premium SSD, premium SSD V2, with the IOP settings, throughput settings, and all those things. I said about QoS, and we'll also specify a stop application commands here which means basically, well, it's just a dummy command for us to write to a log. But if you have a database operation, for example, that would also be a good time to quiesce the database so that you actually get an application consistent image migrated and not just a crash consistent image migrated. But either way, it should be fine. Uh, these additional parameters, we can ignore it because this is a non-prod environment at this moment because the migrate ops feature is not released to the public version yet. And the same thing, we'll be migrate Windows to Azure, right? And this would be the, the same thing. We'll also migrate to the resource group. There are a lot more settings that you can choose. For example, the virtual network, right? But with, if you do not specify it, we will simply use the first virtual network in the resource group. So we'll stick with the default for all these options. So let's just go ahead and create this operation. Okay, so we see that this migrate Ubuntu to Azure and migrate Windows to Azure has been created. And let's see how they're doing. From here, you will see that we will go through all different kinds of steps to go through different phases from preparation 
to migration to cut over to and go through the whole recipe of moving your workload to Azure. And with our experiences in migration, we have actually go through all the necessary steps that's needed, right? With host drivers, with any configuration that change that you need in order to be compatible to operate in Azure, we'll do it for you. And of course, this also applies to different hypervisor, VMware, KVM, and also all different kind of public cloud, private cloud, OpenStack, different environment as well. You don't really have to do anything. This will just run by itself. Of course, you can always monitor the environment. We can look at, oh, okay. So we identify the virtual machine resource group. So this is more like the operation log. So we identify the, the virtual network ID. This is what we're going to use, the SAMI test VNet, which again is this one. It's all automatically created. So we are deploying the virtual machine into this standard D2S as we specified with two CPU and a gig of memory. So we'll be creating the public IP using the right network, everything as, as we specify in the YAML file. So the good thing of the YAML file is that you can scale this as much as you want. In this case, we are doing two. And if you see before this demo, I had go through this many times and migrated quite a few different, different machines all in one shot into Azure. Some failed. Yes, some failed because there was an issue with um, invalid configuration that we put in that has actually conflict with another migration. But otherwise, this is extremely scalable and there really isn't any limit to the scalability because these are all horizontally scalable, meaning the more VM you have, they just all operate on its own and migrate. And that is also the benefit of using this migration as a service solution rather than having to go through the sizing process or different things to deploy virtual machines and deploy virtual appliances or even physical appliances. So these are all operating, the Windows and the Linux. Let's take a look at the Windows. It's pretty much the same steps that's going on. And, and let's look at the steps later. Like we'll be preparing destination storage and go through all these things. Later on, we will have a step that require approval in order to cut over. Obviously, we can. We won't just, while you're migrating, and shut down your machine, right? You might have a cut over window, you might have maintenance window and things that you need to consider. So you can approve it when, it when it is time, or you can even approve it ahead of time. Say, okay, you are allowed to cut over between Saturday night, 9, 9 p.m. to 12 p.m. That is time to trigger the cut over. So a lot has been happening right now for both this Linux and, and it failed. Let's take a look at why it failed fail to consume migration license because I do not have enough license. Uh, I think I need to contact my sales team now. Actually, I can add additional migration credit because my account is actually subscribed through the Azure Marketplace. So we can simply export to the project. And after we get the license from Azure, we will go through this introducing migrate ops, same as demo. And I will go through our license. Let me just be generous and give myself one terabyte. Okay, we're all set and they both fail for the same reason. The good thing is for any reason that it failed, you can always retry and we will pick up where we left off. We'll simply retry, come to this job, retry as well, and it will go on its own. All right, it's created. So while it's happening, let's take a look at Azure. What is going on right now in this resource group refresh? Ooh, we already created the two virtual machines and created the OS disk and the proper disk that we are interested in. So our 50 gig boot drive and the one gig data drive for the Windows and also 10 gig and the one gig Linux drive basically, which is our 10 gig here and the one gig here. And so is the Windows where it is 50 gig and the one gig. So all these are automatically done by Serious Data Cloud. There's no menu process needed for this. It's all just that YAML file that you created for your 10,000 VM and you just put it in, schedule the time and do all those things and it will just all run by itself. All right, so we also have a network security group created that is just for the migration purpose and all the configuration created in this resource group that I specify. Of course, this is not required. You can also specify to go into some other resource group, the network go into each own, they're all flexible. It's all defined in our, in our configuration that we support. Right now, we'll simply let this migrate. So this is now migrating, right? This is now migrating. We have seven gig to go for the Linux. And for the Windows, we 
have 46 gig to go. It's going to take a while. And that is why I think <laughs> I want to record this demo. <laughs> so let's wait for this one. So after, after the synchronization is done, we will uh, go to a final synchronization when you approve it. So, so right now it says that you need to get approval and you need to put a note. And you can also pre-approve it or use API to approve it or approve it for a future time. Okay, so you can even pre-approve it now. Then by the time we finish synchronizing, it will cut over. So we'll do that later. And after that, we will go through our remediation process and at the end, right, go through our post-migration operation. There isn't a lot to demo here because it just run by itself. So let's just wait. Okay, after a quick coffee break, we are coming back to here. So let's take a look. So now our Windows is still synchronizing. All right, let's take a look at the progress. So it's migrating because our Cloud Labs networking to the Azure is not very good. <laughs> so it will take a while to go. We can see what data still has to be synchronized, right? And a few little bit here that has been changed that we need to remigrate. So now let's take a look at our Linux. Our Linux has actually made a little bit of progress. It actually finished synchronizing. Now it gets this step that require user interaction. It actually require an approval. So approved. This is a demo. You can cut over anytime. So only people with the admin privilege would be able to approve this. I'm going to approve, confirm, All right? And remember, while all this time, our our thing is all live. So let's go to our MNT and touch and touch a file. Say I am migrating. All these are still live, obviously. So this will all go by itself, and we basically just have to wait. We always can review how we identify the entities, and create a virtual machine that we need. Also, create our mapping of the devices, and yeah, and create the Azure devices according to the specification. So now we are waiting the final bit of cutover. So it's still going by itself, and let's check the windows again. You can have as many as you want, right? So it depends on different recipe. You might be migrating different cloud from cloud to cloud, back and forth. All these can be all be automated simply by your configuration. Okay, this is moving a lot faster than the Windows because oh, because our Windows actually have a much bigger boot drive. Okay, we can see that we finished the copying and we actually generated a migration report of 10127. So we can actually come to here and take a look at 10127. It will actually give you all the detailed information and the timeline of how we move the data. And these are all part of the operation that we selected. And it is now has power off the source and bringing up the Azure VM already. So if you can see from my back to my VMware, my ST Ubuntu has been powered off. Obviously, this is also optional from the configuration. You can say, do not turn it off, right? So maybe if you have a data protection purpose or you need to go back, there are certain reasons that you might want to keep it up, right? But most of the time, if you are truly having the identical workload, you might want to turn it off. For example, if you have a real web application, right? You will turn it off from here, bring it up in the Azure automatically, right? And you can even use this to use our integration to integrate our Cloudflare, our Azure AWS integration to change the DNS server. So all these can be automated, but then this way, by the time it bring up, DNS will point to the new VM automatically. And now your service will be back online right away with zero user action required. So, so far after pasting that YAML file in, the only intervention I have done is the approval. Oh, it's actually completed. This is a big check mark here, it's done. Okay, let's take a look. While the windows is still going, the Ubuntu is done. So let's take a look. Go back to Azure, right? Our Ubuntu is done already. Let's try it out. So obviously my SSH session of the 10.145 will not work. So I will uh, try the new one. So that would be Sirius at 52.170.139.5 as shown in Azure. And yes, it looks like it is up. So from this Azure on the right hand side where my cursor is, now I my host is back up. 
right, in the MNT, I am migrating to what I showed earlier. It's also in the Azure. So now all my application, my mount point is back, my application is up, right, it's rebooted, and migration is completed. So just from this, you can see that we migrated from our VMware to our Azure virtual machine with zero user intervention other than an approval, which again can be done ahead of time to set a approve for a cut of a window. And we basically just put in our configuration, just like a typical automation configuration. And Sirius Data Cloud does the whole migration by itself, including all the remediation or the driver or configuration injection, right, or reconfiguration, so that this will boot up in Azure. So now our application is running in Azure. So now let's come back and let's wait for wait for our migration to finish. It still have 27 gig to go and we will take another coffee break. Okay, and we are back. Looks like we only have three megabyte remaining. Oops, it's actually done. It is now, again, waiting approval. So let's approve it. And it will continue to run by itself. <laughs> Once again, that's the only interaction that you need is to come here, come here, put in your configuration, which again, you can even do it through our Ansible module, through our Terraform module, or through our REST API support, right, which we have full REST API support with all different operations in our documentation, or our open API spec, right, which cover all the things where we can generate SDK for any programming language of your choice. Okay, come back to the demo. We can see that uh, it has already powered off my machine and it's bringing up the Azure machine. So my Windows 97 is powered off. My 50 gig, one gig machine is powered off. We can come back and take a look how it switched to my wide open security group. Again, reality, you will switch to whatever fits your organization based on the configuration. And it will go through a post migration routine, which could be a lot of things like, again, database upgrade, agent installation, agent removal, like for example, after you migrate, VMware tools are no longer applicable. The post-migration operations, you can say, please remove it for me, right? All these things will be part of it. And because again, this is a SaaS solution, it's constantly being updated. Like tomorrow, you might have, hey, set up a backup service for me, right? So let's enable Azure Backup. All these can be all automated in one shot. And again, that is why we have to design this in an automation first approach where you can put in the automation configuration and you will all execute it for you. It's horizontally and infinitely scalable. And our approach to having a GUI wizard is basically to build that configuration, that automation configuration for you. Okay, so it looks like I got a check mark for my great windows to Azure. Let's come back to my resource group and you can see that this windows serial number it's already created, it's already running. So let's get the IP address and I will paste this into a remote desktop to connect to this 52.170.76.116. And it is up. All right, let's take a look at our computer manager. Scroll down, this two, our SQL data 01 is mounted and is back. So our dummy my SQL file, my data is back. So migration is completed. So let's review what we have done. We created an original configuration, which was either created through, uh, again, based on our documentation, you can create using a code editor, your in the configuration as code, or following the documentation, or you can use our wizard to build this, build this whole process, right? So basically this is the configuration that we have entered with two machines, right, in two job under operations. Again, you can have a thousand of these. And by submitting this, we created this two latest job. This was created 34 minutes ago, 34 minutes ago. This was uh, yeah, 22 hours ago. This is my previous demonstration. And just migrating this Ubuntu 20 machine and the Windows 2019 machine. So, and we went from my VMware from A and this 10 gig, one gig. And we have successfully migrated to Azure. And from our remote desktop, we see that our SQL data is back. And from our terminal, we also see that all our migrating files 
and our application configuration is back. So that's it. With just one click to submit the YAML file and the click to approve the cutover, like, or you can pre-schedule it, the whole migration operation to migrate from on-premises, VMware, your, our ESX server, to Microsoft Azure with zero user interaction needed. That is uh, my demo. Actually, there wasn't a lot to demo because all I did was to just paste it in and it finished by itself. That's it. It's just like that. Everything is done. That's all I have.